Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. And today I'd like to show you kind of a sort of dark art trick uh, for sometimes you can get away with repairing dings or dents. And I'm not talking about a scratch, right? So not where material's been like removed, right? But where the material in a hard rubber mouthpiece has been pushed around like in a dent, like we can see on the rails of this mouthpiece here, right? So those, those are actual dents and dings on this rail, probably from being knocked around inside of a case. And this is high quality hard rubber. And the trick is that if you apply, if you judiciously apply heat, exactly how much and exactly where you need to, sometimes this stuff will actually pop right back out. Now, this is not something to try out on your favorite mouthpiece if you've never done it before. I've been doing this for years and it still makes me nervous every time. And the amount of heat you use and how you apply it is where the trick is. Now, I've heard of people using a heat source like an incandescent light bulb, like setting a hard rubber mouthpiece near an incandescent light bulb, but that seems pretty imprecise to me. Um, but you can burn the hard rubber, you can malform it, you can mess it up. So the idea is that, you know, basically, you should do this if you're planning on a reface anyways. Um, and if you get away with this and you don't need a reface, hey, great. So this is an original Soloist Longshank Sea Star, and the heat source I'm going to be using is a zero zero tip on my acetylene and atmospheric air torch, right? So not oxyacetylene, but acetylene and air. And this is the zero zero tip. It's fairly mild, right? I mean, like I can actually like put it out on my finger without really having too much of a problem. Um, if you hold it on there for too long, obviously that's going to change. But this gives a gentle pinpoint heat that I can move quickly to where I want it to without having the heat spread, uh, without having, you know, without burning the hard rubber. Um, butane would be too much. A hot air gun might work if you've got like a pinpoint tip, but I think that that forced air is going to move where you don't want it to. So basically I would recommend a zero zero tip, um, with, uh, you know, a small flame like you see here, uh, out of a uh, acetylene air torch. So don't try this at home on a nice mouthpiece. If you've got a junker laying around that you're not going to do anything with, it's got a ding in the tip, you can give this a try um, if you have the right equipment. So let's see, let's see if I can get the stuff in focus and then I'm going to look off camera while I do this. There's one. Handshaking, I'm so nervous. I'm nervous to do this on camera. There's two. There's three. This little one over here. Okay, so, and there we are. That is much better than it was before. I think I see a little one there I might like to try. I think that one's gonna stay, mostly anyways. Okay, so there we have a quick and pretty good repair. I think this piece right here, I'll probably run over a little bit of 1000 or 1200 grit sandpaper because there's a little bit of a bump here where this didn't completely heal just to smooth it out. But there you go, one of the dark art tricks for repairing dings in a high quality hard rubber saxophone mouthpiece. And obviously this is pretty easy to screw up. Um, so proceed at your own risk. Don't do it on something valuable if you don't know what you're doing. And uh, you know, you saw how my hands were shaking there. It's a pretty nerve wracking experience, but when it works, it works pretty well, right? So this mouthpiece looks a lot better than it did. And after probably just a really quick swipe, cause I actually, I know how to reface. I don't do it often. 
but I'll probably touch this up. But you know, 95% of the work was done with just a little bit of heat and I didn't have to remove any material. Hope you found this helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. Thanks for watching. And here is an addendum. This is what we've got after one light swipe on some wet 1200 sandpaper and then a little bit of polishing on the back of the sandpaper. And it plays.